Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Um, it's been a little bit since i done the youth uh, sermon. Uh, it's been a couple weeks. Um, but I do have a word for y'all tonight, and it's a small word. It's um, it's not really a big word. Um, it's almost like I'm just kind of just sharing something with y'all. But um, I pray that someone is blessed by this. And um, also just... If y'all hear barking or if y'all hear anything, it's my dog in the background. That's, that's normal. Uh, but um, I do pray that anyone that watches this, um, your heart, mind, ears is all open to um, hear what the Lord may be speaking to y'all tonight. And this really speaks to me, too. Um, just because I'm here giving the word, I'm a youth pastor or anything, it don't matter. Um, we all need to hear words, too. And so this speaks to me as well. And so, um, but I'm going to pray real quick, and then we'll get right into it. So, dear Heavenly Father, we give you honor and glory. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace and mercy. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, uh, that you help me just to speak this word. And I pray that anyone watches, that um, their hearts won't be hardened, but they will hear what you have to speak to them tonight, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Pray this and give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, like I said, I just got a small word tonight. Probably I'm not going to be on here very long. But I just want to go ahead and read a scripture and then we'll get into it. So in John chapter 6 verse 35 it reads this. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. And the title I have for the sermon is Satisfaction is Only in Jesus. You know, um, I was recording this um, earlier, and I was sharing that, um, you know, it reminded me about the woman at the well. If you haven't heard this, um, but it was a story in the Bible, uh, which is true. <laughs> a woman at the well where she was trying, she had been married, I don't remember how long, three, four, five times. I don't remember. But she was trying to satisfy and feel that longing in her by the wrong kind of love, by being married two, three, four times, and she could not feel that satisfaction. She was going round and round and round, trying to do this, trying to do that, to fill that void, that hole inside of her, until she met Jesus. And she, as you, uh, long story short, she was satisfied. So, um, but Jesus is the bread of life, and he says, he who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes shall never thirst that jesus can only truly satisfy us and in truly today's time there is a lot of worldly things that we try to satisfy ourselves even as christians while trying to follow jesus there's times that we can mess up and we're trying to go back and try to instead of going to jesus which we know we would try to go and try and fill it some other way. But only Jesus can only truly satisfy and fill that in, that void inside of us. And there's many things that we will try to do that with. I'm, I can remember some things before walking with the Lord, what I would do to try to satisfy me, to satisfy that void inside of me and stuff like that. But one thing I do want to talk about, one thing that... Um, I believe the Lord wanted me to uh, speak on is how we try to um, uh, try to satisfy ourselves. And this goes especially with youth and growing up. And that one thing is gangs and uh, crews or cliques, whatever you want to call them. Uh, now, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be up straight forward with you. I've grown up. I was never in a gang. I was never in a crew or click or do anything like that. And I'm not trying to boast about myself and I'm not trying to make myself seem more holier than thou. I'm just being honest. I just wasn't um, in that growing up. Um, but a lot of times um, growing up, I do know that um, there's a lot that goes and, ha and plays a big part in something like that or why growing up people would choose to go into their gang. And... Um, I got four, uh, four uh, different reasons possibly why that can happen. And one of them is probably from the upbringing, just a terrible upbringing. Um, parents who probably fight all the time and parents who never even show their children any kind of love at all 
Uh, number two, they don't know who they truly are or they don't know where they came from. Uh, number three, uh, one thing right here is they like to feel that they're part of something or part of a family. And number four is, of course, they try to satisfy. And it all starts with trying to satisfy that void that's inside of them. For one thing, if they had parents that didn't have brothers, sisters, or didn't even have a family to even show love to them or care about them at all, they're going to try and go and find some that, that somewhere else. And that place is probably a gang where they feel like they're part of something, where they feel like they have a family, where they feel like they have protection, where they feel like that they have love and all that stuff. But what they don't know truly is, I'm going to go ahead and share this scripture with you. I have this, um, it's, it's before. Um, as Proverbs fourteen twelve it reads this. Um, before I read all that, you know, before I read this, is what I was sharing is that, let me go ahead, let me just read the scripture. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Proverbs fourteen twelve. With that being said, we're going to a gang. It reads here in Proverbs fourteen twelve. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. And I'm sharing that with you um, out of love. That, you know, Jesus also says, broad is the way that leads to destruction. And narrow is the gate that leads to eternal life. And it's so easy to just get into the world. Get into things that's not pleasing to God. And I can probably... Just going into a club, going into a clique or whatever, anything like that. I know it probably just makes you feel like you're protected, like you're part of a family, like you have someone. But if you're going out stealing, if you're going out beating up people, if you're going out killing people, or if you're dabbling in drugs and, and, and fornication, meaning if you're, if you're having sex outside of marriage and stuff, and if you're lying and disobedient to uh, your parents and all kinds of stuff, none of that is pleasing to God. And that's no love. And I'm just here to tell you that that may seem right to you. Yeah, you may feel like you're protected. You may feel like you're part of a family. You may feel like some type of love. But there's a way that seems right to a person, but its end is the way of death and that's why i was sharing with y'all in john six thirty five that jesus says i am the way uh jesus says i am the bread of life that he who comes to me and believes shall never thirst and never hunger but i just want to share with you number one i had upbringing like i said upbringing parents fight not real parents not really taking care of kids don't seem like seem like there's any kind of care for you at all but I'm here to tell you in Hebrews 5, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5, it reads this. <clears throat> now, you may have earthly parents, like I said, and they may have not shown you any kind of care at all. But God says in his word, in Hebrews 1, 5, when someone gives their life to Christ, you automatically become part into the family of God. And it reads right here, Hebrews 1, 5. For to which of the angels did ever say, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Or today I have um, birthed you. Meaning that. Mal. Meaning that. But I'm not going to get into it all deep into it. But Jesus was the son of God. And he says, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father. And he shall be to me a son. So you may not have had the parents that you wanted growing up. But when you come to Christ, you do have a father that cares and loves about you. Number two, not knowing who you are or where you come from. And for that one, Jeremiah 1.5. And this is a pretty much famous scripture. He reads this, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So where we come from, God actually forms us and our mother in the womb. God actually forms us. He actually created us and he has a great plan and future for us. And sometimes we may not see it. Sometimes it just may tough. I mean, just, but God is good all the time. Always. And number three, feel be lost. Feel be a part of something, a family. And for that, I have 
I know it's a lot of scripture, but I just want you to hear me out. In First John three one says this: "Behold, what manner of the love of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God." If you felt felt like you didn't have family, you didn't have no one there for you. Well, I just want you to know, like again, like I said, once you give your life to Christ, you already become. Uh, a child and you have a family and it says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God so you have your brothers you have your sisters and you have someone there to be with you and care for you and love you and lastly satisfy why sometimes people go into gangs and stuff because they got that longing inside of them they need to satisfy something and it goes it goes with a lot with all of this they're trying to satisfy uh, not having a parent, uh, not knowing who they truly are, not being part of something, to have a family. They're trying to try to satisfy a lot of things. But like I shared with you before in John six thirty five, that Jesus says, um, that I'm just gonna read it again. That Jesus says, oh, I didn't write it down. But he says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst again. That's being that Jesus satisfies everything right there all at once. And um, so I was just talking to a, uh, um, a cousin of mine. How he, he was sharing some stuff with me, how he was going through a lot of stuff and drinking a lot. But he just, <laughs> just coming uh, to the Lord, it, it, the Lord just helped him to, to just quit a lot of things. And uh, he's finding that satisfaction.